art for justice. Aggie's idea, her unique singular idea, was to support artists and advocates who are reimagining narratives and policies to reshape the landscape of criminal justice in America. Aggie's bold action inspired others to join her in radically rethinking how they deploy their resources. Our beloved Julie Moretu, whose work explores the possibilities of cultural and political liberation, donated proceeds from the sale of her beautiful painting, Dissident Score. More than 300 other creators and donors joined Julie and contributing millions more in support of this exciting and radical idea. And together they built not just a fund, but a network, a network of support and a dynamic and growing community of art for justice artists and advocates and allied donors. According to new research, Art for Justice's common purpose and unconventional approach helped cause-driven artists attract new funding for their work, and it attracted new donors to the movement to end mass incarceration in America. In fact, right as we got the first A for J grant, we won a major case striking down the cash bail system in Houston, Texas which has gotten about 19,000 people out of jail just in that one county alone every single year. Um, so we're up to about 100,000 people released from jail just in Houston alone. Um, and that also means several hundred thousand um, children and family members who are not being separated. It means um, almost uh, 80,000 criminal convictions prevented, tens of millions of dollars in fines and fees kept in, with people. Over and over again, in many dozens of cities and counties across the country, we've filed these cases and we've won. Some of the progress that we've seen in the last decade um, in ending life without parole for uh, children. And um, I, I think it is incredibly significant to lift up um, that kind of momentum that we've seen. You know, three Supreme Court cases um, that uh, were victorious, as well as uh, a number of, as you saw, 28 states now that ban life without parole for children. It was five in 2012. Um, and mo most importantly, a thousand people who were told as kids they were going to die in prison, and they were worth nothing more than that, our home, some of them in this room. And yeah. <laughs> I'm also grateful for Agnes Gunn's vision and leadership, which created a very powerful partnership among donors, justice advocates, people affected by the criminal uh, system, and artists. The, that partnership and those relationships among those four kinds of stakeholders had never been seen before. And it's a model, like the work of Art for Justice itself, that will continue to accelerate progress in pursuit of justice. So this is not the end. This is just a beginning. It's been, you know, six years of uh, a real a, a journey, a listening journey, a learning, and of co-creating things together. Um, and I'm really grateful to be with this panelist, um, who really kind of embody what we believe at Art for Justice is so powerful, which is when artists and activists joined and supported by allied donors come together, that some very, very exciting and special things are possible. Artwork is the thing that actually allows people to come into something that is often very dark and heavy and like weighs on people, but it allows people to connect on a very human level, right? It's not just numbers, it's not just statistics. That works for some people and that really moves some people, but some people need to feel the emotional connection the human element, and I think that's what artists do really well. And that's why the Center for Art and Advocacy is dedicated to continuing the legacy of Art for Justice and also continuing to steward this community and keep um, 
all this amazing stuff that has been built over the last six years moving forward and keeping artists and advocates um, collaborating into the future. Also, I would just like to take one moment to have all of our right of return artists stand up from the past yeah. six years. We're in a collaboration, so we're like actively um, at this moment showing you that collaboration of artists and activists. And then when you uh, your organization shut down a prison, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh yeah. So you, when you call me, I'm like, yes. Yeah. So me as an artist, put the put you know collaborate, and then with, with our project, um, add nine back there trying to hide. <laughs> But I have I have you as like the prominent person, you know, because so they start asking who's Act Nine. He sh he uh got um, laws changed in San Francisco while he was in prison. Yeah. So it, 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 and in, in, in Philadelphia, they they gonna know who you are. So I already got you. Ain't even know that you know now. <laughs> and that's what the art do. Like so, as an artist, I got the opportunity to to do that to lift him up and and keep the work going. We now, as A4J Sunsets, one of our other legacy grants is really to Worth Rises and to Bianca's team so that they can expand this national campaign to amend the 13th, uh, the exception to the 13th Amendment once and for all. So, Bianca. And I'll say it's an absolute honor, right? Like, trying to amend the Constitution is a wild task. <laughs> it's been done 27 times before. It's just not that many times in, you know, history of a country, but it is 27 times, which means, like, it can be done again. Um, and our coalition is now more than 90 national organizations. Worth Rises is among one of the smaller, right, when we think about it. The ACLU is on board, the NAACP and EJI and, like, all these organizations that, you know, have existed for much longer and everybody sort of knows. No, it's in our team, Vera Institute, I want to shout out. Um, it's also on the steering committee and moving this work forward. Um, we ended the 117th Congress with nearly 200 co-sponsors in the House, and that was huge, right? I believe that we're on a road to a place where mass incarceration is completely reconsidered. It's a long road. It's a road that many freedom fighters uh, have been on for many decades. Um, but with each passing year and with each passing decade, we get closer to imagining a more just world. And Agnes Gunn's contribution to that is priceless. So thank you, Aggie, for including me. Well done, well done, and thank you. Maria Inahosa, with her Art for Justice grant, made a podcast called Suave that if you haven't listened to, you should, and she got a Pulitzer Prize for it. When we had this conversation, though, Suave was still behind bars, and I had no idea that we were going to be able to make that podcast, and it was because of Art for Justice that we like so many of you felt the love and support and able to do what we wanted to do, which in our case as journalists was to try to correct the narrative, try to change the narrative, try to create that cultural shift. So thank you, Aggie, for believing in Suave and you too, Kat. So Aggie, listen, I know you've got a little laryngitis, am I right? Yes. Just a little. So we're all gonna be really patient with um, Aggie's uh, laryngitis. What I've like best is the relationships I've been able to make with some of the people like Russell Craig and Tyra Patterson. And um, Tyra recently just had cancer and she's coming along remission. very well with that. So many of our A for J um, People have become family, and it's been a huge joy watching people exceed all expectations with a little bit of opportunity. People said, if we can be together, we realize our, our movement is stronger And when we work together, and we created the Uniting Art and Ad Advocacy Grants. And Lisa and Norris applied for one for Lisa to go into Angola and perform her one-woman show, The Peculiar Patriot. And it just kept going. Yo, 
I love this kind of love. So thank you, Aggie. We love you, Aggie. Thank you, Kat. We love you, and long live Art for Justice. Yes, long live Art for Justice. In reflecting on what it has meant to be a part of this wonderful team for the past six years, I can't help but recall what has been a continuous trend this evening, community and care. We have all held each other in community and care for the past six years, and we're going to continue. Ain't nobody gonna stop us now. Said ain't nobody gonna stop us now said ain't nobody gonna stop us now said ain't nobody gonna stop us now we are works in progress, poets, tired of digesting ourselves in 280 characters or less. And we are a fire, tired of keeping itself to the streets. We are a low hum, climbing in the silence of a Congress falling asleep. We are a storm of butterflies in a field of terror. And like I said, ain't nobody gonna stop us now. Woo!